this video we'll be looking at genetic engineering and under that stem cell research genetically modified organisms and cloning so genetic engineering is when we use biotechnology to satisfy our human needs so that is when uh, the genes found in an organism are manipulated and then that organism will become genetically modified so basically we manipulate the genes of an organism to satisfy our human needs this is done by taking the desired characteristic from one cell and placing it in another cell from another organism so there could be multiple organisms involved when we look at genetic engineering now, disorders and diseases can be slowed or stopped by replacing faulty genes with good ones. So the desired characteristics um, will then replace the faulty ones. You need to have an opinion with regards to genetic engineering. Um, they have asked the genetic engineering um, in essay questions and it's also shown up in investigations. So please form an opinion with that. So you can see this either as selfish because we want to satisfy our human needs or you can look at it from the human perspective of things and let's say one of your loved ones is, is sick or dying and the only way to help them or get them better is by using something that was genetically engineered. So just form an opinion on that. Then the process that is used so a healthy gene is extracted and inserted into the faulty cell using a vector. Now what is a vector? The definition is here at the bottom. It is a vehicle, for example a plasmid. Remember we were working with um, the plasmids when we were busy with insulin last year. And the vehicle is used to transfer the genetic material such as DNA sequences from the donor organism to the target cell of the recipient organism so basically the vector acts as a taxi now with regards to genetic engineering this is what a vector is but vectors are also found with diseases so if we look at malaria the vector the carrier the taxi for malaria the plasmodium parasite is a mosquito um, that is then in that case the vector of that path specific path pathogen um, looking at stem cell research, you need to know that stem cells are undifferentiated somatic cells, so the body cells. What does undifferentiated mean? It means that these cells have not yet specialized for a specific function. Um, example, these cells have not yet um, become lung cells or liver cells. You can't have a lung cell in a liver or a liver cell in a lung. It's not going to work and those organs won't be able to perform their function because those cells have not specialized. Now with these stem cells they can repeatedly divide by mitosis making many more stem cells. Um, so there's a continuous supply of these stem cells. These stem cells can then be stimulated and they can differentiate into specialized cells such as muscle cells or nerve cells that can then be used. Where do we find these stem cells? So you get embryonic stem cells that are found in the blastocyst from embryos not used at fertility clinics. You can get fetal stem cells. Uh, these are generally from terminated pregnancies or amniotic fluid also carries that the umbilical cord and the placenta will also carry fetal stem cells and then lastly adult stem cells which are found in the tissues of adults such as bone marrow, uh, blood, the heart, the liver. Um, if somebody has leukemia you'll hear that they would generally have to get a bone marrow transplant so that is when they will use these um, specialized bone marrow stem cells um, to replace those blood cells. Looking at embryonic stem cells using the blastocyst, so at these fertility clinics um, people that struggle with fertility will have in vitro fertilization happen so that is when they they've stored um, eggs, they've frozen some eggs and then they use sperm cells and then they get fertilized 
um, outside of the body. And then the fertilized uh, embryo at that stage will then be implanted back into the uterus. So where do the stem cells come from? They come from the blastocyst, that inner cell mass is what they will use for the stem cells because those cells will eventually become specialized cells. So these are the undifferentiated cells that they use. Now when we look at stem cells, there are three different kinds. You don't need to know that, but just for interest sake, you get pluripotent stem cells. I don't know if you can read that. You get multipotent stem cells, and then you get the specialized stem cells. So pluripotent stem cell would be the embryonic stem cells because those cells can literally become anything. They are pluripotent, plural, many. And then multipotent, so this is, for example, adult stem cells. So let's say somebody removes the stem cells from bone marrow. What does bone marrow do? It helps us produce blood. So that specific stem cell in the bone marrow can then um, produce cells only relating to um, a smaller group. So it can produce then all the types of blood cells. Uh, but it's still far less than what embryonic stem cells can produce. Then the specialized cells. So let's say you've taken a red blood cell. Then if you have stem cells for that, it can only produce more red blood cells. Or let's say you've got a nerve cell. It can only, if you've got nerve um, cell stem cells, it can only produce other nerve cells. What are stem cells used for? So to grow new cells in a laboratory, to replace damaged organs or tissues. So for example, you can have these stem cells grow cardiac cells, so cells that are used in the heart, intestinal cells, liver cells, if there's perhaps some liver damage, um, nerve cells, muscle cells, blood cells, all of those things can be done using stem cells. To correct parts of an organ that doesn't work properly, um, research causes of genetic defects in cells, research how diseases occur or why certain cells develop into cancer cells and then test new drugs for safety and effectiveness. Now using stem cells there will always be ethical issues involved and the main reason for that is because embryos are used. Now the debate is there is that embryos could develop into a potential person. It could be, it could be a, a a life that you are taking away technically and then people also feel that um, people are playing God by creating new things and then obviously the religious views that are against it so that is what you need to know under stem cells we are now going to look at some genetically modified organisms also known as GMOs these should also not be strange to you I'm sure you've heard of these so what are they? They are plants, animals, or microbes that have been genetically engineered. So why do we need GMOs? They can be used in medicine, cloning, production of crops, and then stem cell research. So basically it is there to improve the quality of life. Looking at medicine, so it's used to produce vaccines, um, insulin production, which we looked at last year. There's no religious problems. Uh, we can have it in mass production, there's no animal cruelty, um, and then fewer side effects. Because if you can remember from last year, uh, before we used uh, bacteria to cultivate insulin, uh, it was actually done by extracting it from pigs. Then agriculture, choosing plants and animals with the most desired traits so that we can get high milk yields, um, perhaps have chickens that produce lots of eggs over their lifetime, uh, crop yields uh, increase, and then pesticide resistance and so forth. We'll look at that in a bit better detail now. Please know the advantages and disadvantages of GMOs. This can also be asked in, uh, in some questions. 
So the advantages of GMOs is that there will be a larger, better yield and stronger crops. So these crops will be resistant to diseases and droughts and pests. Um, they'll be stronger. Uh, it'll be cheaper because there'll be no spraying needed of pesticides and insecticides. It will be built in to the genes of these plants. So you actually already get um, genetically modified crops where they are toxic uh, to insects, uh, insects that will eat them. And then they'll have a longer shelf life, so it means that they'll last longer in the shop or in your fridge at home. Uh, they can be genetically engineered to taste better. Um, they'll have a better nutritional content. This is a major um, factor, uh, for example, in the developing countries where there's lots of food issues and then production of medicines like insulin and vaccines. The disadvantages, there has been negative effects on the health of humans. So some people have actually developed allergies um, with genetically modified organisms because we're playing around with the gene pool. Undesir sorry, undesirable effect of new genes in the environment. So basically, what can happen is that the gene uh, for pest resistance or, or killing pests uh, or being resistant to herbicides can perhaps jump over to another uh, plant species. So let's say it jumps over to weeds. Then weeds in the end become resistant to herbicides and then we won't be able to kill weeds anymore. The biotechnology involved with producing GMOs is very expensive. And then once again, ethics involved here. Um, people are saying that uh, people that are experimenting with GMOs are playing God. And then the cost of the modis modified seeds can become very high. So you need to know this table and the disadvantages and advantages. Getting to cloning which is probably the most sci-fi thing you can do when you are studying for life sciences is, is this chapter over here. So cloning, what is it? It is when genetically identical, there's a genetic, uh, genetically identical copy of an organism, cell or molecule that is made. And probably the most famous clone um, that has ever existed is Dolly. So this sheep over there, but then that is also Dolly. So Dolly was the first mammal to be cloned from an adult cell. Now that is why she is so famous, is because she was cloned from an adult cell. If we look at um, this again, adult stem cells, these ones were thought to not be able to differentiate into much else. And that is why it was such a big deal that Dolly was formed. Uh, there had been previous clones that had sheep that had been cloned using embryonic cells, but Dolly was the first using an adult cell, which was very massive at that time. So that is Dolly, and then her exact copy, her clone also known as Dolly. And then this is the surrogate mother that gave birth to Dolly. So let's look at the process um, used when cloning Dolly. So the somatic cell is taken from the organism that has the desired characteristic. So in this case, Dolly was a Finn Dorset sheep and then they used a Scottish blackface sheep as the egg donor. So what they did was they took the somatic cell that they used was the mammary cell from Dolly. They then removed the nucleus because that is where all of the DNA sits that makes Dolly Dolly and they stored that. They then removed an egg cell from the surrogate and they removed the DNA. So they removed the genetic material because we don't want the Scottish blackface uh, DNA mixing with Dolly's because it will defeat the purpose then. So Dolly's uh, DNA, the nucleus, was then placed inside the ovum and then it was placed back inside the surrogate in the uterus and then eventually a clone was produced which was Dolly.
Now, Dolly had, uh, she lived quite a full life and she had many offspring. And when Dolly died, she was actually, her body was donated to the National Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh. So if you ever find yourself in Edinburgh and you want to see what Dolly looks like, you can go visit the exhibition. Then you also need to have some viewpoints for and against cloning. So for cloning, why would we be for cloning? Because we can get a better yield in crop, uh, in crops, so in agriculture, or let's say you've got a milk cow that is the best milk cow that has ever lived and she produces a lot of milk every day, then um, you would want that for your business. Then organisms can be produced in a very short time. You can produce organs. Um, so let's say somebody is suffering from liver failure or heart failure. You can then clone that um, organ and have an organ transplant. If you've ever watched the movie with Ewan McGregor, The Island and Scarlett Johansson, um, it's, they live in like this facility and they eventually find out that they are clones for the outside rich people and if something happens to those people they get, well, they get harvested for their organs. So it's, a, it's an older movie but watch it. Um, individuals with the best genes can be produced. Infertile couples can have children. Conservation of endangered species. Now this is also an interesting one, um, there is an article in the description tab uh, with regards to this. A lot of people are saying how will you save endangered species by cloning them because you first have to look at why they became endangered species, will it stop the hunting and killing of these animals. So there's, there's quite a few things to look at before, we, before you jump into the conservation of endangered species. Then elimination of diseases. And then against, once again, it is unnatural. It is against unnatural selection. Um, scientists can be prejudiced, so it's not real natural selection. Somebody might have, like, I don't know, they might find a certain characteristic appealing, but that thing, that characteristic is not necessarily beneficial for the survival of that organism. Then religious outlooks, um, once again, plain God. It, de uh, it decreases the genetic variation, it's very expensive, the long-term effects are still unknown, and harmful genes not seen in the phenotype um, are passed on and are not eliminated by natural selection. Um, so those are all of the things against cloning, and then obviously the ones for. That is the end of this video. Thank you.